welcome, welcome to Easter Sunday at Church of the Nativity. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so glad to be celebrating this beautiful, beautiful Easter Sunday with you. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Caddick, and I'm here with Allie Wade. Yes, so Allie, happy. Allie, how are we doing today? Great. I'm so happy to be here with you. We always have a good time. We but of course, time. happy to be here with all of you, everyone joining us online and in person today. I love Easter at Nativity. We always have so much fun with yes. it. And it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. The sun's been out a little bit today. I mean, as, as, hey, as long as it's not raining. Exactly. It's all good. And it is. It's, it's not raining yeah. right now. It looks beautiful out. Everyone's in their Easter best. Yes. Everyone's all dressed up. So just no way, way better way to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord than here with you definitely. and all of you. Definitely. Definitely. And the fashion is just one of the best parts of Easter Sunday. <laughs> it has been so much fun watching the little kids. Today oh, I know. In their Easter that outfits is the best. and in their shoes and socks and their little purses <laughs> and their little jackets. Oh my gosh, it is so adorable. But if you are joining us from home, you might be watching in your pajamas because you could be in any time zone. And if you are in the East Coast, no judgment. Yep. That's fine. Also you can support absolutely that. Yep. Also support that. <laughs> After um, being here for several hours today, Allie and I are a little jealous. We're excited of, for our pajamas. Well, like, this are, afternoon, we'll be we in are. our pajamas. <laughs> Definitely. A nap will be taking place. So we are so happy that you're here. And hey, if you are new or relatively new to Nativity, a very special welcome to you. We yes. love welcoming new guests each and every weekend. And Easter Sunday is absolutely no different. We've got a special gift to say thank you for joining us. So take out your phone right now, whether you are in person or online, and we want you to text the word welcome to 88877. And then we can connect with you and we can give you all the information you need to know about Nativity. But most importantly, you can get that little Easter gift from Nativity to say thanks for joining us. Absolutely. We are so glad each and every one of you are here today. There is tons of excitement on campus right now. You can see behind us, everyone's kind of flooding in on the concourse. People are starting to grab their seats, but we know even more of you are joining us online as well. We're getting in the Easter spirit, and of course, we couldn't do that without our very special guest. The Easter Bunny was here earlier today. He was here earlier, and he had all this work to do this morning, and He's had a long Is morning. He, he needs around? a nap this afternoon, but I think he might still be here. I saw him in our, our Easter garden in the Vision Cafe. Oh, oh there, there he is. is. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. He's waiting for you to go and take a photo with him in the Easter garden. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is just great. Our and beautiful. good for him sitting down. Yes, He's, taking a break, taking resting, a break. taking exactly. a little rest. Yeah, so if you are joining us on campus or you're local to the Baltimore area, be sure to come by and find him. Say hello today. And while you're on campus, take advantage of our Easter garden for a great family photo op. Yeah, like Allie, we talked about everybody being dressed up today. It's a great time mm -hmm. to go down to the Vision Cafe and have that little family photo or <laughs> selfie in front of the garden down in our Vision Cafe. And while you are sharing those images on social media, make sure that you tag mm -hmm. Church of the Nativity because we would love to see your beautiful faces and, of course, all of your beautiful families. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to see those photos. You know, I'm just loving our Easter garden because Easter's pretty early this year. It is. We're still is technically March. in March. We're trying to bring the spring energy, the summertime colors right. and everything like that. The warmth and all of the flowers in our Easter garden is bringing that too. So we have that beautiful spot in the Vision Cafe, but we even have some other spots of spring fun and photo ops sprinkled all around our campus. So be sure to check it all out. That's right. If you're here on campus with us, just head up the Glass Colonnade, which is around the corner from where Allie and I are right now. And there we have another photo op that's really beautiful too. So make sure that you tag Church and the Nativity in all those photos. <laughs> all right. So this weekend is also a big weekend because we are starting a brand new message series for Easter. And if you're new to Nativity, we preach in a message series, which means we take a few weeks at a time to focus on one specific topic. Mm -hmm. Our new series beginning today will take us actually through the weekend of May 4th and 5th. This new series is called Reawaken, Win the Battle in Your Mind. In this series, we're going to focus on the renewal mm -hmm. and transformation of our mind and thoughts. We're so glad that you are joining us as we begin this series, and we hope you can plan to join us throughout the full six weeks of Reawaken. You know, Easter and springtime is a time of 
renewal and refreshment and spring cleaning mm -hmm. and all the things that kind of help us get refocused, yep. right, after coming out of a long winter season. And so this is a great time for a great series to help us with all those things. Yeah, and the timing really is perfect that we're beginning this kind of series on Easter Sunday of all days, a day to not only renew all the spring cleaning and things like that, but renew our mind, our heart, and our faith with the confidence in knowing the hope the resurrection provides each and every one of us. So we want to just take a moment and pause right now to remember why we are all here today to celebrate the good news of the resurrection. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hey, no, you gotta see this. Look at this. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How have you not seen that yet? Congratulations. Thank you. Let's start getting it. Tell us everything. Okay. So, I can't believe it. What is it? You gotta be kidding me. Come here, you gotta listen to the story. I have something to show you. <laughs> oh my goodness! Dad! Dad! <laughs> that is great! <laughs> We're getting this. Who are we gonna tell first? We gotta tell our mom something. Your mom and my mom. Peter! John! Come see this! The tomb! It's empty! Oh, that's so beautiful. It gives me chills every time I see it. The good news, that is what today is all about. Easter, as well as our new message series, all great ways to invite others and share with them the good news. And you know what? There's still a little time before Mass begins, so you can send a quick text mm -hmm. or make a call to invite someone to watch Mass with you today or make those invitations for next weekend as we continue with our new series. And if you are new to Nativity today, we are so glad that you're here to be able to join us to share the good news with you. Absolutely, and you know who else is sharing the good news today? Oh, I know, they're they're ready. They're ha it's happening in our praise, praise party. party. We love praise party. Look, oh, there they are, there see? They are. they are all ready to go. They are waiting to welcome you. Praise Party is our children's Liturgy of the Word program, and we are excited to invite our elementary age kids to join in on the fun. This is a program during Mass that has music and a message just for them. If you want to join in, you can look around right now and find your section leader that has the green kids shirts on. They will give you a glow bracelet and a hand stamp so that you are all set to head out when Kelly comes back on during Mass to make that announcement. And if you're joining us online, all you have to do is go and grab another device and go to churchnativity.com slash kids to participate in Praise Party from wherever you are. Speaking of our online community, though, we want to give a big special shout out to all of those who are watching us online from near and far. You guys are amazing, and this celebration would not be the same without you. So please say hello in the chat. Jump in, let us know who you are and where you are watching from so that we can welcome you and your friends and family today. Yeah, you know, with our online community, we extend so far beyond mm -hmm. the walls of 21093, our zip code here in Timonium. And so now we want to have a little bit of fun for everybody. Whether you are joining us in person or online, mm -hmm. you can now participate in
It's oh, the golden egg trivia down. countdown. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were waiting for it. We were holding you. The golden egg trivia crackdown. That's right. It and there's, there's an egg and it cracks, hence the, the egg crackdown <laughs> and the puns that Allie did a really good job coming up with. All right. So right now, we want you to take out your phone. We want you to scan the QR code on your screen. We have a couple of Easter trivia questions for you to answer, and you are going to want to participate to make those guesses because the Easter Bunny has a special prize for our winner. The Easter yes. Bunny is not done working today. Oh, it, By any stretch of the imagination. With there he is. Another Easter basket. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Easter, Easter Bunny. Bunny. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. So oh, wait, if we you put win, the ears down. You win this amazing basket will have you hopping right into spring and summertime there you there go it is. there's yeah, my puns all right yep it's got sunscreen a beach towel but this golden egg i just want you all to see this golden egg it's like an ostrich this is why we call egg. it the golden egg trivia uh, that, that's right we gave you a significant golden egg yep and the thing about the golden <laughs> eggs right there's always something special inside mm -hmm, nativity definitely definitely has many <laughs> special things inside of this golden egg so we want you to participate. So let's get ready. Allie, I know we're getting close to the start of Mass, so I hate to break it to you. You can't participate in this. I mean, I'm going to ask you the questions, but you can't win. Because right? I give it away. I don't, I'm not allowed to win the basket. You're not allowed to win the basket. <laughs> but nonetheless, we're going to ask some questions in trivia. Scan that QR code so mm -hmm. that you can play along with us, all right? So the first question is, what color were Easter eggs dyed for the first time? The first Easter eggs were dyed what color? No clue. Well, that's good, because you can't win. Yeah, so I can't win, so yeah. No, no clue. No clue, no clue. But Chelsea on our staff yep. has chickens, and I feel like she just knows all egg information oh, so and Chelsea trivia. So knows. I'm going to ask Chelsea. Well, unfortunately, Chelsea can't win either. The, but uh, nonetheless, we want you to answer the question, what color were Easter eggs first dyed? All right, the second question in our trivia game is this. In the 13th century, the church prohibited what type of food during Holy Week? You could not eat this type Just of food during Holy laughing Week. laughing at 13th century diet culture. I don't, I can't say I know it super well, but I'm so going to have to study up on that one. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one, but I could make a guess. You could probably make a good guess, a good educated guess here. So we want you to do that as well. And then our third and final question. This is kind of like the, 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 it's a give me question if I'm being quite honest. I'm giving you a little bit of a hint. So what flower is considered an Easter symbol? I've got to think it might be a flower in our Easter garden. I don't know. Maybe I'm steering people the wrong way, but we've got a whole Easter garden We here. do. We do have a whole Easter garden. I don't know that this particular flower no. is in the Easter garden, but nonetheless... It might be. So yep. take advantage of that QR screen, QR code on your screen. Let us know what you think the answers are to what color was the first Easter egg, what was not allowed to be eaten in the 13th century during Holy Week, and what is the Easter flower symbolizing. Yes, well, we are just about to get headed into Mass. We just want to say again, thank you so much for joining us and celebrating your Easter with us today. We know you are here for a reason. Welcome to Easter Sunday at Nativity. Believe in the sun, I 
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Easter blessings and a hearty welcome to all of those on campus and all of those around the world. We are one family of faith, trusting, believing that Jesus rose and conquered sin and death. And so we are part of that victory as we place ourselves in God's presence and ask for his mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth.
God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewed baptismal vows be brought by your Spirit to rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, hello, everyone. Happy Easter, and welcome again to Church of the Nativity. If you are new or relatively new to our parish community, we have a special gift to say thanks for joining us this Easter. Be sure to visit our Welcome Center here on the concourse, or if you're watching online, text the word welcome to our number 88877 to connect with us directly. Now, as we move into the Liturgy of the Word, we are excited to invite elementary school age kids to Praise Party. Praise Party is our children's Liturgy of the Word for Easter. It's a fun, high-energy, interactive worship experience. For families with us in person, look for your kid's section leader wearing a green shirt and make sure your kids have a glow bracelet and handstand. Our section leaders will lead your children to Praise Party and then bring them back to their seats afterwards. For families joining us online, if your kids want to join in on the fun, visit our website now at churchnativity.com slash kids. And now, prepare your hearts as we hear from God's Word today. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit of power and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him by death to death by hanging him on a tree. That man God raised on the third day and granted that he be made visible, not to all people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Become the core. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, you too shall appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. Both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Easter. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad I'm here. <laughs> you join us at the perfect time as we start a brand new message series today. As a parish, we choose a topic or theme and over the course of several weeks try to dive deep into it. We found that it really helps people engage and I'm very excited about this topic because it's going to give us a lot to think about. In fact, we'll be looking at our thought life and how it can work for us and not 
against us. We're going to explore how to have a healthier thought life. On Easter Sunday, we read the familiar story of the resurrection as told to us by the Apostle John. You know the story. Mary Magdalene discovers the empty tomb. She runs to tell Peter and John, who in turn race back to the tomb to confirm this news for themselves. John arrives first, probably because he was younger and faster. Scripture tells us he saw and believed. He saw and believed. What did he see? He didn't see anything. What did he believe? That Jesus was alive. He had believed that Jesus was dead. Now he believes that Jesus is alive. In other words, he changed his mind. He didn't see anything, but he changed his mind and believed. The key element here being faith. Your success in life depends in large part upon your thoughts. Your life always moves in the direction of your strongest thoughts. In any area of your life where you're experiencing success, where things are going well, you can trace it back to your thought life. Your success followed good and solid thinking. You learned an insight about your industry and ran with it. You believed in your abilities and you reached your goal. You were taught a new habit and that improved your health. Every achievement and success starts with a thought. On the other hand, if there's an area of your life that is not going well, where you're unhappy with the results, then chances are you fell into some faulty thinking along the way. If you have a bad habit or self-defeating behavior, there's prob probably a limiting belief or lie you buy that is keeping you from changing that behavior or dropping that habit. The way you think and what you think drives your actions and directs your behavior, in turn, determining outcomes. And your thinking not only determines your actions and outcomes, it impacts the way you feel. We often connect feelings to the heart, but our feelings are actually driven much more by our thoughts. We might experience our feelings in our heart, but what causes us to feel a certain way begins in our mind and how we think. So, if overall you feel good about your life, in your marriage, with your kids, among your friends, at work, at school, then much of that good feeling comes, at least in part, from your thoughts. However, if you tend to feel depressed, dissatisfied, or disgruntled with your life, then it might be your thoughts that are leading you there. The other point I'd like to make, and one you might push back on, but that's okay, I'm going to make it anyway, is this. You can control your thoughts. It's true, you can. You really can. You can choose what you think about, what you want to think about. It's been called a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. A growth mindset believes that change is possible, that we can grow beyond our current abilities in every area of our life, including our thinking. The fixed mindset says no. No, you can't change. You can't grow. You get to a certain point, and that's it. You know you have a fixed mindset when you hear yourself saying things like, I will never learn how to handle my finances well. My marriage is never going to get any better. I will never be able to get good grades at this school. The fact of the matter is the brain can continue to grow as we think differently. As we think differently, we change the physical nature of our brain, rewiring our brain, getting rid of unhelpful patterns of thinking and replacing them with healthier ones. You can control your thought, and here's the thing. Faith, faith can be a powerful factor in that control. All this is nothing new. Scientific research has finally caught up with Scripture. 
Throughout the Bible, we're taught to pay attention to our thoughts, that if we want to head in the right direction and find success in life, we need to learn to think correctly. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul famously wrote, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then there's a passage we read from Paul's letter to the Colossians. We just heard it in today's second reading. Paul writes to Christ's followers in the church of Colossae, a church community in Asia Minor. And he wrote this, If then you were raised with Christ, think about what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. On this Easter Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus conquered the grave. He's been raised from the dead. Today celebrates an event in history that changed history. In fact, it changed everything. While the religious and political leaders of his day put him to death because they were jealous of him and they saw him as a threat, Jesus didn't stay dead. Even though they crucified him three days later, he rose from the grave, victorious over sin and death. Unlike John, Paul only came to believe in the resurrection after the risen Jesus himself appeared to him. But following that experience, Paul became an effective, even fierce apostle. Paul, who once persecuted Christians for belief in Jesus and his resurrection, became the biggest proponent of all, perhaps ever. And so it's Paul who teaches us that in celebrating Jesus' resurrection, we don't just celebrate an event that happened 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, but has nothing to do with us today. The resurrection is not a one and done kind of deal. Just as Jesus conquered sin and suffering, so too will everyone connected with him. Just as Jesus rose from the dead, so too will everyone connected with him. So, when Paul says, if you have been raised with Christ, he wants the Colossians to think about that, to think about the implications of that statement and what it means for them. Their lives have been changed as a result of Jesus' resurrection. But then Paul goes on to actually expand his point. He writes, think of what is above, not of what is on earth. Set your minds and focus your thoughts on heaven, not just earth, the whole of your mind and all of your thoughts. Now, Paul is not saying to have your head up in the clouds. He doesn't mean for us to be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. When he says, think about what is above, he means start there. Start with the perspective that heaven provides. Start with the perspective that God reigns and God rules and God is in charge of all things. Then put everything in that perspective. The way of the world is to get us to focus on the problems of the world. And they are myriad and heartbreaking. And sometimes the problems close at hand, close to home, can be even worse for us personally. They can be overwhelming the problems and struggles of our daily life, of parenting small children, negotiating with teenagers, finding friends at school, dealing with employees, building a business, handling our health, handling other people's drama. We become myopic and come to think that life is just dull drudgery and toil. That's what happens. That's what happens when we focus our thinking only on earthly things. However, if we'll reverse our perspective and think about heaven first, with everything else considered in that context, suddenly the earthly problems and struggles aren't necessarily overwhelming. And even what's heartbreaking can hold hope. Keeping in mind that Christ is seated at the right hand of God, the place of highest sovereignty, is the very best possible perspective to view the pol political problems in our country today, the current conflicts among nations, 
even the calamity this week in the port of Baltimore. Keeping in mind Christ's resurrection is the best possible perspective to view personal problems and challenges too. Think about it. If Jesus could conquer the grave, he can sure conquer your financial stress or marital strains. If Jesus could conquer the grave, he can help you conquer your struggles at school. If Jesus could conquer the grave, he can help you conquer your fears and dispel your doubts. Paul continues, for you have died and your life is hidden now with Christ in God. What does that mean? What does he mean we have died? Well, when anyone is baptized, they're baptized into Christ's death as well as his resurrection. So increasingly, we aspire as baptized Christ followers to be dead to sin, dead to self-defeating behaviors, dead to unhelpful, unhopeful thoughts. Increasingly, that's just not who we are. Our life is in Christ, and the life we have in Christ is a hardwired connection to Him. We can't see it. We often fail to rely on it or even appreciate it, but it's there. It's there waiting for us to use. Christian living is about learning to use that connection, that grace, to become more and more and more like Him. How? Precisely by seeing our life in the context of Christ's resurrection and learning to seek first what is above. Successful Christ followers know all of this is a process. It's a journey ever to be undertaken anew. And Easter, Easter is a perfect opportunity to get started or start all over again. You could plan to join us over the next five weeks in person or online as we take a look at renewing our minds in Christ. We'll look at some sp specific topics like replacing lies and doubts with truth, reframing problems in the light of God's goodness, rejoicing and living in joy. Join us for this challenging new series in the weeks ahead. But there's actually one other thing you can do today right here. Did you know that every Easter Sunday we return to a very ancient, very honored tradition? We renew our baptismal promises. We renew the promises we made in baptism in which we began our journey with Christ. Even if you're not baptized, you can commit. You can make this promise for the very first time. You certainly don't have to. You're more than welcome to sit this one out but know that you are welcome to join us. It's a way of committing or recommitting to a loving relationship with a living Lord. Paul concludes his amazing counsel to the Colossians, more or less summing up the whole reason for our gathering today, the whole reason for our gathering at all. He wrote, when Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. That's how the story ends. That's how our story ends. Keep that in mind. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our first holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord forever and ever. Amen. As you're sprinkled with the holy water of your baptism, it's customary to receive that with the sign of the cross. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, 
on this day above all else with laud when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sun celi et terra, Gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, St. Michael the Archangel, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another now a sign of Christ's peace. One who stays, Miserere nobis, on you stay, we toll is undi, miserere nobis, on you stay, we toll is undi, on a nobis pacha. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul. Oh, my soul, I worship His holy name. I sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the Lord of oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day, when my strength is fair, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul I worship His holy Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, I worship your holy name, Lord I worship your holy name. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Thanks so much for joining Nativity today. We are so glad that you are here. We invite you to join us again next weekend as we continue our current message series, Reawaken. In fact, to kick off this message series, we have a free resource for you this week. It is the five mental moves to renew your mind. You can pull out your phone and text the word renew to our number 88877, and you'll receive receive that resource right in your inbox. It'll be a great guide and help for you throughout this series. But we have tons of fun happening today on our campus, so be sure to join us in that. That's right. You can head over to the Vision Cafe where our Easter Garden is located and get your photo op before you leave. Also in the Glass Colonnade, we have another little photo op for you to take advantage of as well. And make sure 
to tag Church of the Nativity and all those beautiful family photos so that we can see all of your lovely families. Yes, and in addition to all of that, we also have a very special guest, the Easter Bunny here today. And Father Nicholas, I heard you had a run-in with the Easter Bunny this morning. Well, I did have a run-in with a bunny this morning. Honest <laughs> the goodness, honest truth, I'm driving here from Mercy Ridge, going, getting ready for Mass, and a rabbit ran across the road. I thought that was a divine sign. This is not the same rabbit, by the way, that's gonna appear on the parking lot. <laughs> But that rabbit will be here, and the cars will be here, so you can take pictures of the kids in the cars. Uh, only if you beat me out there, because I'm, I'm headed there myself. So we will see you there. If you stand for the blessing, be happy to give you that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We love you very much. Alleluia, Deo gratias, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sunday. We're so glad that you were able to hang out with us for a little while today. Make sure to join us next weekend as we continue with our message series, Reawaken. It'll go through the first weekend of May, May 4th and 5th. And take note for next weekend because we'll be back to our regular schedule for Mass Times. And so that means 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, both in person and online. All right, everyone, have a beautiful day. Happy Easter. We love you very much.